maiden day for the Hobby King Tundra. Turned out to be pretty nice, but it had some choppy winds that were up 40 and 50 feet. This is the maiden flight, and though the controls all looked centered, the Tundra had some down and left in it. Both of those needed several clicks of trim to get straightened out. Later on that same day, another guy would show up with a brand new Tundra, and I did the maiden flight on that one also. And though once again the controls all looked centered, it had a bunch of left and down in it when I lifted off for the maiden flight. This is still the first time around on a maiden flight for my Tundra, and I was noticing that it was getting bounced around a little bit by the winds aloft. But we have to remember that this is a small, very light foamy. And even though it was getting bounced around a little bit, the controls all remained very positive. I never felt like it was getting out of control. And I was finding out that the Tundra is a lot faster than I was expecting. Here I wanted to see how the Tundra responded to the rudder, and it likes the rudder a lot. It needs a little bit of cross control on the ailerons, but you can do a lot of nice turns with the rudder on this Tundra. One of the things I always look for when I fly a high wing airplane is how it flies inverted. A lot of high wing planes seem to need a lot of down elevator just to fly straight and level, but the Tundra likes flying inverted just fine. I had plenty of down elevator left over and felt comfortable enough to let it drop down closer to the ground. You just don't see that many high wing foamings that fly this well inverted. And something that I noticed when I rolled it inverted on the last pass is that the Tundra has a pretty good roll rate. Add landing flaps at speed and the Tundra does a loop all on its own, no elevator needed. This is still in the maiden flight and I decided to shoot some approaches and you can see that the wind kicked up a little bit here too. With the flaps at 45 degrees and just a little bit of power, the sink rate's real nice and the elevator works fine, you can set the Tundra down easily. Between the large wheels and a powerful motor, it doesn't take hardly anything to get the Tundra in the air either. The downside to a plane making this much lift is when you turn it into the wind, it may balloon like it just did right there. There's nothing wrong with the Tundra, that's just the price you pay for a very light foamy airplane. But even with some wind, the Tundra is very docile on landing. Right here I accidentally test the spring loaded landing gear and find out that when you bump the ground a little harder than you should, it absorbs the impact very well. And the landing gear works even better when you pay attention and don't bump the ground hard. Here we'll do a full power takeoff with the flaps at the landing settings. And you gotta hold a bunch of down elevator to keep this going straight up and not coming over the top onto its back. Here I faked out my cameraman a little bit and I took it up and then put it in a spin. Let go of the sticks and the Tundra recovers from the spin right away. Maiden flight went so well I decided to put the FPV deck on that comes with the kit. The FPV platform is all made of light ply and you do have to assemble it. But it fits the plane nice and it makes it easy switching over to FPV from a regular flying plane. This really is the second flight on the Tundra and the first that I'm going to be trying FPV. So Mike's going to stand by next to me to guide me if I get lost. One of the reasons we got the Tundra was to use it for an FPV platform, and I find out that it works really well for that. I also found out that I need to work on my perspective when flying FPV, because I thought this plane was higher than it actually was. And every now and then Mike got excited, like right here. One of the things I like about FPV is you can fly down a line of trees like this, and everybody thinks you're already in the trees when you're about 30 feet away from them. Just remember that this is only the second flight on this plane and the first FPV, so I need a little experience to get used to this. I spent most of this flight just making laps around the field and getting used to what it looks like when you're flying FPV. I had intended to show you what I was seeing through the goggles, but I forgot to put the memory card in. Here I thought I'd make a low pass to scrub off some altitude on the way to trying a landing, and right about here the wind got underneath the wing when I was making the turn, and we almost had a big problem there. But I missed the ground. For me, the biggest problem with flying FPV with this plane is getting used to what it looks like when you're getting close to the ground. I managed two takeoffs and two landings, but the landings could have been better. When I thought I was about three feet off the ground, I was actually at the ground. And here's FPV takeoff number two. This is landing number two, and I wanted to try a steeper approach. And the Tundra does handle very well doing that, hit the flaps out, push the nose down. But here again, I thought I was higher than I was when I got to the ground. The good news is that the Tundra is a great flying airplane. It'd be a good plane to learn on for a student. It also makes a great FPV platform that I'm going to be using a bunch in the coming weeks.
I think dollar for dollar, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a better airplane in this price category or this size. If you're looking for a fun high winger, you need to check out the Tundra at HobbyKing.com. 